What's up, YouTube? Knight's Edge here again. Got uh, a little review for you. Uh, get the channel info out there. That's uh, the channel you're watching, uh, Knight's Edge. Hit the like button if you like the video. Subscribe if you want more content like it. Really helps me out if uh, if you subscribe to the channel. Subscribing is free on YouTube. Um, all my information, Instagram, TikTok, email, all that stuff's linked down below. Best way to get a hold of me would be uh, email or uh, direct message through Instagram. So this is the Civivi Cubit. Pretty neat little knife. I uh, had this knife for a few months now. Used it, sharpened it, uh, used it again, resharpened it again. Um, this is the one in green aluminum and Damascus. That's Civivi's Damascus. It looks pretty good. I love the little raindrop pattern on the Damascus. And uh, we're going to talk a little more about that. But first, we'll go ahead and get uh, get the size comparisons out the way here. Well, before I do size comparisons, go ahead and do measurements. I always get ahead of myself there. I'm trying to kind of keep stuff uniform, you know, where I do measurements, comparisons, weight, you know, stuff like that. So trying to kind of get it like in a uniform fashion here. Uh, overall, you got right at 7 and an eighth on overall length of the knife. On the blade itself, you're looking right at three inches if you go to where the blade meets the handle there. And uh, cutting edge, it's got a pretty decent uh, four finger toil on it. You're looking right at two and three quarters on cutting edge. Go ahead and do the calipers. Get out the old calipers here. Blade stock thickness. Thickest part of the spine. Let's see. 82 and a half thousandths, relatively thin, right? And right where the edge meets the, uh, right where the apex, or not the apex, right where the bevel begins on the edge is right at 22.5 thousandths. So not especially slicey, but a pretty slicey, pretty thin blade stock uh, little knife, I would say, you know, compared to the average. <clears throat> Go ahead and uh, do the handle too while I got it here. I like to do that. I always forget to though. 0.43 of an inch is what you're looking at with handle. 0.44. So under, uh, definitely under half an inch. Not especially thin, not especially thick on the handle there. Just right, I would say so. You know, most knives are that, that I've looked at, but um, I kind of like to do that just to give you an idea of, you know, what, what you're gripping there. So a, lot, a couple people have asked for that. So I've, I've that's why I do it. So, Spyderco Paramilitary 2 up next to it. So, definitely smaller than the Paramilitary 2. And that is the Spyderco Para 3. So, right around the same size as the Para 3 when you look at it. Um, almost the same cutting edge size, too. It also has a forward choil on it, right? So, pretty comparable, I'd say, even to the uh, Para 3 minus the hump that the Para 3 has got on it. <clears throat> There's your Ontario Knives Rat Model 1, Ontario Knives Rat Model 2. So, you know, you can tell it's more like along the lines of the size of the Rat 2 there. And, you know, last but not least, we'll do the Doug Ritter, Ritter Hogue RSK MK1. And we will do the Hogue Deco and Magna Cut. So more along the lines of the size of the Hogue Deca, although Hogue Deca is a little bit longer and uh, has a little bit more cutting edge. Go ahead and put those up. And we'll get out the scale here. And this thing's pretty light. It's aluminum. It's not titanium. But, uh, you know, it's also not FRN. So that aluminum does kind of feel a little, you know, gives you that little premium feel to it. You know, solid feel, I guess. But uh, it's really light also. 2.8. So just over the ounce and inch. Uh, well, under actually the ounce and inch ratio. I was thinking about the cutting edge. But uh, at 2.8, it is uh, right at the ounce and inch ratio, a little bit under. So that's that's not bad at all. You know, um, really good ratios on this thing. And zero this thing out and turn it off. There we go. All right, I'm going to get out the old blue jeans here. Got the standard Civivi pocket clip, but they'll never change. 
Um, one benefit to it, one good thing about it is it's deep carry. So that's good, you know, kind of disappears, look like, looks like that in the pocket. But I don't like this spoon bill. I never have this little, I think they need to kind of slant, and you can fix this with channel locks or, you know, a vice or a uh, crescent wrench. You know, you, you can fix this. You know, it might not look as good after you fix it, but uh, you can definitely fix it. And you can buy an aftermarket Civivi clip on Amazon for like 10 bucks. You know, that's a lot better than that one, but I've never been a fan of that one. Anyway, it is deep carry and uh, it is reversible, you know, for left handed carry. So all you got to do is take those two screws out, take this screw out, put it on this side, screw it down and you got it right. So we'll go ahead and do hardware check on this guy. This is a Weha. Weha bit driver. I believe this is a Weha bit too. I think this is an extended bit. This is a T8 here. So check the body screws. I haven't taken this thing apart. All right. So body screws are T8. That pocket clip screws a T8. That body screws a T8. And I think. Let me try it out real quick here. No, pivot's a T8 also. Captive pivot. Let's see. Yeah, pivot's a T8. So T8 all the way around. It's set for the pocket clip screws. Not this one. This is a T8. All right. But these, I believe, I'm almost 100% sure. As a matter of fact, on a wee high bit, this is a T6. Yeah. Yeah, so pivot screw T8, uh, body screws T8, but the uh, pocket clip screws are T6. And it's a captive pivot. So almost a home run with that. You know, kind of wish the, the other pocket clip screws would have been uh, T8. That would have been good, but, you know, that's still, you got a captive T8 pivot and uh, T8 body screws. So that's a good thing. All right, looking at the action on this guy, uh, I think we're through with the specs. Let me get into the action on it and everything. Uh, it really, really is smooth. I like this little knife. It's a good little knife. Uh, you can reverse flick the thumb stud like that. Uh, pretty good action. You know, plunge lock. So Vivi's plunge lock, button lock closes. And once you pass that point, it disengages the knife, allows it to close. So if you hold a button in, it kind of loosely, you know, just hangs like that. I haven't had any issues with this knife disengaging. Um, I've used it quite a bit. I've never had it fail. Pretty decent little wax there. Still pretty solid. Haven't had any issues with this button lock failing at all. I really like the green aluminum. Really like that. As a matter of fact, with this knife, I have thought actually something I would not normally do about getting the regular version that's not the Damascus and um, swapping it out, right? And putting the, the um, 14C 28N blade on this green handle because I like the green handle. But I'd have to buy another knife, so I'm probably going to end up not doing that, you know. But uh, I am definitely a big fan of the green, and I'm definitely a big fan of this aluminum. And um, it's really ergonomic, actually. You know, when you look at it, it's a simple, you know, looking at the handle, is, there's no finger grooves, nothing like that, that would help normally ergonomically. So you're not thinking it would be that good ergonomically, you know, when you're grabbing it. But these corners are smoothed out and they're rounded pretty well. Um, access to the button is good. And they have this forward finger choil here, which helps whenever you want to, you know, holding it normally, you'd hold it like this, I guess, not choked up, you know, and kind of like the normal position. Choked up, you're going to do a little more detail work. You can kind of choke up like that. Now, they could have cut that out a little bit farther, you know, because I, I don't have, I have i guess regular size hands i wear a large glove you know um not especially large hands but not especially small hands so um i think they, they you know would have been better if they would have cut that out just a little bit more but uh you know that's that's not uh a deal killer by any means you know 
Uh, this can be used also as a bottle opener. So that's pretty cool. You know, if you drink uh, fancy IPA beers out of a glass bottle that don't twist off and they open, you know, and for some reason you have a budget knife in your pocket, that's a good thing. But um, I don't know. I, I would uh, I would use it every now and then, I guess. That bottle opener, it comes in handy, you know, if you don't have one on you. So really good action on this guy. Uh, it's running on bearings. It's trying to open and close it a few times so you can kind of see. The thing, the, the only downside to this, and like I was saying earlier, I mentioned about swapping the scales out with that other blade. The normal version of this comes with uh, 14C28N. I keep wanting to say LC200N, but the normal version of the Qubit, the Civivi Qubit, not the new premium Wii Qubit, but the Civivi Qubit comes in at 66 bucks, 67 bucks with a 14C 28N. Now I've got two Civivis that are in 14C. I've never had an issue with them at all. Um, this is the Damascus blade. They don't list what their Damascus is, what, what combination of metals it is. Damascus is a layered process and it's whenever they layer upon layer uh two different steels and they did not name the two different steels at least not in the description that i was looking at so that's one thing they could get better with putting out there exactly what steel it is um beautiful pattern on it you know it's a beautiful raindrop pattern i guess you'd call it a raindrop damascus you know that's just describing the pattern no idea what metals i've heard uh Civivi uses 10 cr layered on other things i'm not sure now i have had other people i've seen other videos where people um really compliment Civivi's damascus as far as uh you know and it does look good but as far as edge retention is what i'm mainly talking about now I, I when i bought this knife i used it a little bit carried it for maybe uh two days at work you know and uh, after that two days it was really dull it wasn't it wasn't like kind of shaving hair anymore. Definitely not cutting paper anymore. So I put it on the uh, KME and I sharpened it. And I put a 17 degree edge. This is actually still the same angle, but a uh, different grit. So I put a 17 degree edge bevel on this thing with the KME, but I went all the way up to 1500 grit. I'm, I'm hoping that's what was wrong um, and why it didn't hold an edge very much. But when I went up, to that 1500 degree um mirror mirror shine you know even after i put the 1500 uh on it i stropped it i believe i made a pass with uh with a lapping film actually too so you could actually read letters you know out of the edge bevel on this thing it was a mirror polish mirror edge and i uh, used it cut a little bit with it maybe a few cuts and i'm talking less than 10 you know and this thing was dull i mean i if you watch my Sunday sharpening that I actually just did earlier, but it's going to be out um, on Sunday and this review is probably not coming out till midweek. Go back to the Sunday sharpening. It's in my playlist. And uh, when I sharpened this thing, I kind of went over it a little bit, but it wouldn't even cut paper, you know. So now I've got it finished with a six uh, with a 600 grit, which is fine, but it's kind of, you know, medium. And uh, I, I stropped it a little bit after that and it slice right through paper so i'm hoping this will hold a decent edge you know maybe i just sharpened it to the wrong grit and that might be the case if not i would highly recommend the uh the 14c 28n version of this and uh, i would i would probably recommend that version anyway i've just never had Civivi's damascus so you know while i like the green handle and i thought the damascus looked neat so i was like okay well I'll just pay a little bit more and uh, I'll get that really neat, you know, handle and raindrop Damascus. And uh, this knife, other than that, I really don't have any negatives about it. I mean, it, it's reversible pocket clip, great ergonomics, good slicey little small knife, great button lock at action, uh, reliable, you know, um, disappears in the pocket. It's aluminum, it's lightweight, but yet it feels premium like titanium. Only negatives would be the, you know, the T6 on the clip, the um, kind of spoon bill at the end, Civivi clip that tends to grab stuff, and the uh, Damascus, you know, not having as good an edge retention as I would like, but also, like I said, I could have sharpened it 
to the wrong grit and uh, that would explain that. So in that case, it wouldn't be a negative, right? So anyway, that's pretty much it. That's the Civivi Cubit. I'm going to link it down below. Uh, the Damascus version is 80 bucks. The 14C 28N version of it is, I believe, around 67 right now at the time that I'm making this video, you know, um, but I'll link it down below in the description. So anyway, uh, good little knife. Overall, got a couple, you know, little issues with it, but I would recommend this one for sure. So this has uh, been the Knight's Edge, another video. Appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing, everything really helps me out. And I'll see you guys on the next one.